let's listen to this. We are back now with the song that's a little bit country. But Can you hear it? Not enough. The viral hit Old Town Road by Little Nas X. Whatever. <laughs> Welcome to the Deconversion Therapy Podcast. We have a cube for purchase on Amazon where we tell soothing things to you. The touch of a button. Only $40. I'm Karen. Life affirmations. Ours will be, why the hell did you think that was going to work, Karen? <laughs> Stop being shitty, Bonnie. That that's looks from Karen to me. That's right. It's just <laughs> me it's talking just... <laughs> to Bonnie, and you purchased the cube of it. <sighs> Thanks for coming to our show. We have a, l- I wouldn't say a lot of new listeners, but we're getting new ones. So let's reintroduce ourselves. Bonnie, take 10 seconds. I will take three minutes to introduce myself. Uh, Karen and I have known each other since we were a year old, and we met on the street. And mm-hmm. then our parents sent us to the same day school, and then we ended up at the same high school, and then we were college roommates for the first two years at a Christian school and, and sidelining parallel, running parallel, like a good service road to an interstate was church the whole time. Yes. The whole way was the church. We were sold out for Jesus, at least one of us was. The other one was pretty lukewarm, but she was in there. She was in the mix. She was mixing it up. She was bringing her $2 for pizza on Wednesday nights. Hello, I was the president of our youth group senior year. I must have missed all of that. Fuck off. I was the president of the damn youth group. I think it was the month I had mono. It wasn't a month. It was a whole year. Oh, my God. Did we have to listen to what you said or something? Did you take roll? Shut up. Were you in charge of pizza? I had ideas and we <laughs> executed them and I was in I came up with the New Year's Eve lock in. Oh, my back is still not repaired. <laughs> hey guys, come and hang out on this terrazzo floor. <laughs> right. For a, they probably didn't have enough chairs for us. To uh, just I just remember it being in. like, okay, I'm not comfortable anymore and I have a really right. big stomach ache and I'm mad at my boyfriend and <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You are welcome, because that (laughs) was all me. (laughs) (sighs) Um, Yeah, so we did all that, and we deconverted fully at different parts. We have people who listen to us who are ex-evangelicals, and that can mean that they're no longer Christians or that they're, you know, tossing away the toxic things of the church or things that weren't really taught in the Bible or... Whatever um, it means, something different to everyone. But we went all the way out, and I have a theory why we went all the way out of the church. Yeah, you ready? I do too, but it's going to be offensive to some people. Oh yeah, well I think we're offensive <laughs> in general. But when we did it, there was no community. There was no like, hey, you know, this is a way you can do this and that. Like, as we were leaving, or I will say I, there wasn't, on that road of deconstruction, there wasn't a little bench to sit on that's like, you know what, it's getting painful, sit down, rest here. And this Mm -hmm. is progressive Christianity, or whatever people want to say. Like, we didn't have that. You just kept going and went through, you know, the whole kit and caboodle as you mean of deconverting yeah yeah oh yeah well uh, it was all in my brain (laughs) it was all for for me it was all once you sat down and and charged yourself with thinking about what you were believing it was really hard to keep up with the beliefs exactly yeah so And I think we had, we didn't have like that community that was like, guess what? You can still believe in Jesus, but not believe in these other verses, which to me doesn't make sense because the way I'm geared, at least, it's like. Yeah, it's all or nothing. Yeah, it's like, wait, 
I I don't have to believe these parts anymore, but I still have to I still get to believe this supernatural thing. Like I, I don't get it. But after all that, those people are welcome here. No, they really are. <laughs> they really are. And we have a lot of those and people who are just uh you know, we're always atheists, um, pagans, witches, uh, preachers. Well, I, I am I preachers. I was talking to us. a guy, another realtor, during an inspection this week, and of course, religion came up, and he said something to me like, "Oh, I'm a Catholic, but you'd never know it." And I'm like, well, I don't know what that means, but uh, you know, I was able to spout my whole philosophy, like. Be whatever religion you want. Just don't kill me. Right. And don't shove it down my throat. And don't back policies according to your religion to try and get them passed. You know, that's another thing that we, uh, I don't know, I don't think we have enough to talk about that was in the news, but did you hear that Liberty University is now suing Jerry Falwell Jr.? I love that. And I'm like, I I <sighs> want to be in that back room because they obviously had this whole thing like, okay, we're going to give them a shitload of money to leave. Mm. And then something else happened that now they're like, now we're going to sue you. And I, man... Yeah, but it's, it's there. I think they're suing him for making the university look bad. Right, right. In a very layperson description of what's going on. So the article was in the New York Times on the 16th, and I was so happy because there was the comment section. <laughs> it was just, it's, it's so great because usually the people who read the New York Times, their comments are pretty... Um, they're pretty similar to my beliefs, one, which is always fun to hear yourself echoed, yeah. but they're thought out. Yeah, and, they're erudite. <laughs> yeah, and they're not just out there to, you know, slam people. However, this one, there was a lot of glee being taken in taking him down. And um, uh, and there were there weren't many people going. Well, I'm a follower of Jesus, and blah 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 blah, and and spouting. Uh, I started to say driver's licenses, <laughs> spouting verses and books of the Bible and quotes and stuff like that. There wasn't a lot of that, but what people did keep mentioning over and over is it's time to tax the church. It's time to tax them. They're a huge organization with piles of money, and they're making investments. And um, and then there are the Mormons with a lot of piles of money. Um, so I, you got to read the comments of that. That's all I was. <laughs> I will um, with glee. <laughs> so that's what you know. The whole tax the church. Some people are like, yeah, but you know, the church does a lot of good. And I'm like, the church or a yeah. church? Like, let's talk about each church. So I say you get tax deductions, just like anyone else, from the things that you do that are charitable. Right. And I think that would be fine. Like, hey, here, here's, here's where we can do a nice compromise. But, um, again, my phone and is not... And they would probably... Ha- my phone does not ring asking for my great solutions. <laughs> well, they could also have a different scale of taxes and tax codes for the size of your church. So, yeah, maybe you don't want to tax the little church down the street that has, you know, 20 people. Right. The same as you would, I don't know, Liberty <laughs> University's chapel. Or, I yeah. don't know, that's not a good example. I don't know how how it works but (laughs) but i do know this i know one thing and what i know i'm gonna yell it um (laughs) talking about liberty a few episodes ago we talked about mike lindell when he went there and brought everyone a pillow because he's the pillow guy and then you sent me something i think where costco is quietly removing (laughs) quietly the, the pillows um But the other thing is, so he, I think, is the one starting a social media for all his idiot head 
like-minded, parlory people. And he said, one of the rules is you can't use God's name in vain, which is so ironic because that means he thinks that taking God's name in vain means saying God damn and all that, but it means using God to promote yourself, which is what yeah. he is doing. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel slammed him this week because apparently he is, he's starting some kind of a website. I think it might be even called like my website and he's going to have all these people who are entrepreneurs and they're going to be able to sell things on there. <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel was like, wow, so now we're going to be able to sell things on the internet? <laughs> that, that is really innovative. Uh, well, last week... <laughs> Which is sort of standalone part one, where Joel Austin, we talked about him, and then how he had a picture with Lil Nas, and we're going to get into that, and you know more that, about that than I do. But we were talking about the product that Joel Austin has, which is the, the cube. The cube. <laughs> it has a bunch of buttons, and then you can hear affirmations or a sermon. It's a cube that has information in it that is it's like a speaker of some sort yeah yeah so it's not just a magic eight ball <laughs> but it looks like that but you like it i don't know how many affirmations it has but it has 52 sermons so you know you can really mm -hmm. not move your entire body and just every week push that button and and mm -hmm. get a sermon but uh, so someone said, I gave it three stars, despite celebrity <laughs> endorsements from ready? Ed Asner, <laughs> um, Garth, Garth Brooks, which okay. I can see Garth Brooks being very sort of mm -hmm. positive and Danny Brown. But I don't know who that is. I was so hoping you were going to say Danny Bonaducci when you <laughs> when you said Danny B. I'm sorry. <gasps> oh my gosh, cuz I'd buy it then. <laughs> <laughs> but this person said it just fails to meet expectations. There are <laughs> there aren't enough quotes and in parentheses don't be stingy, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> And then he said, regardless, it just really didn't strike a chord with me. I'm probably going to re-gift it to my sister, Maria. <laughs> That's specific. Um, Not just to my sister. I know. I know. Maria's like, great. Oh, my God. Thanks. There is a, <laughs> there's a whole segment that can be done on Amazon reviews, but as of last episode, if you listen to it on Amazon questions and answers. <laughs> oh, and Karen has never gotten the emails with the questions. So no. I'm trying to think of, um, oh, I know I bought a per, uh, like a purse strap kind of thing, um, with an, with an iPhone, uh, case on it. So you, you snap your iPhone into the case, you strap on this purse thing and you, you have your iPhone on your body, like a cross body purse so that when you're traveling, you can access it quickly and you're probably not going to get mugged. <laughs> so, so I got a question from somebody, does this go with blah, 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 or, you know, how firm is it holding your iPhone? So, you know, other users who are thinking of making the investment ask you questions, and then you provide the answers. So it's lovely. But now it's just gotten out of hand with people asking shitty, hilarious questions <laughs> and people <laughs> providing equally shittiest and hilarious answers. I love it. Yeah. So buy our cube. It'll just be Karen That's right. humiliating me. Braiding. Uh, and find us on the social medias. We're on Twitter, TikTok. We have a Facebook group, Deconversion Therapy. And uh, let's see. Any, oh, That's Instagram. a really nice group. It's, they're very friendly. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, yes, I took down, someone put a meme of a drawing of a butthole today and I was like you know 
I, I'm having breakfast. We're not going to put those up. Uh, you can still have edgy things without <laughs> me looking directly into an orifice, drawn or not. Was it was it a human bottle? Uh, well, I mean, a human <laughs> cartoon one. I don't it wasn't know. a dog butthole. Oh, it for was dogs, not. There was positioning. All about the there was. It was. Yeah, I. Mm. All right, it's okay. <laughs> and I shouldn't laugh because I know after being in fourth grade what that does to the people who post butthole pictures it makes them want to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and we have a newsletter. That's how you can sponsor us. We don't do Patreon. Patreon is of the devil. We only do... Stop it. A newsletter. It's lovely. And the newsletter is twice a month, and it's seven bucks. It really helps because I'm not even going to get into... If you want to start a podcast, get in touch, because I'm going to tell you where where everything <laughs> goes. <laughs> but anyway... Um, we give away a candle uh, and a Live, Love, Laugh shirt. No, That's not true, but the candle part is true from yeah, Illuminidals. Yeah. They yeah. give those, um, those, <laughs> and I saw one in Publix the other day, not from Illuminidals, and I wonder who the manufacturer of these boring spiritual candles are, but they're in the international section now in Publix. Yeah. And at the the, bottom of the aisle. They're under the Goya beans. (laughs) That's right. Um, But, yeah, I was always uh, amused by how readily available those candles were. They're like eight inches high. It's just a cylinder of glass with wax in it and, and, you know, Mother Mary slapped on the front of it. But these ones are much But Illuminidals are good. Yeah, All right, so you can get Dolly Parton on it. You can get the real <laughs> saints, you the know. The real saints of the world. That's it. Not just card tricks. Um, so apparently Karen knows how to pronounce everything, if you noticed a few minutes ago. Mm-hmm, she, should, mm-hmm. she said Joel Osteen and Lil Nas X all in the same sentence because I was pronouncing it Joel Osteen. Little Nas X. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no, you said Nas. I said that I have it I on recording. I thought it was Nas because of nasty, but still more of a Z. Little Nas. And let me just say, yeah, he is on an Illuminidals candle. Is he? Yeah, it's really cute. Wow. So what they do is they sort of put it in spiritual garb. So he has like the. Um, the what it what are these rays of sunlight in back of him and right. like a you know <laughs> roby that's how type Jesus thing. could read comic books in bed <laughs> <laughs> according to Lily Tomlin that's not my material uh, well okay yeah. all right so that's it for our spiel Bonnie take it away because I won't I won't talk about Satan like you do oh thanks uh, so. So when Karen says, uh, let's let's talk about Lil Nas X, I had to first ask myself, who is Lil, <laughs> L-I-L, Nas X, as a sheltered white lady <laughs> of a certain age would? So just like when I lived in New York City And worked at a dog store and didn't have a car. We listened to classic rock on the radio for eight years of my life. I missed out on all the pop music. So now, like when we play tennis, we put music on in the background. And I will think that things are new songs, and they're not. (laughs) (laughs) They're a good 15 years old. So apparently Beyonce blew up at one point. Um And there was a time when uh, this guy, Ryan, who was hilarious, came to work with us. And every time I would go to the bathroom, he'd switch it on to the pop music station. And I can't tell you, the only song I remember hearing over and over was Womanizer, 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 Womanizer. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And, um... And then, of course, the little dancey guy from downstairs would come out. That's my jam. <laughs> Do a whole dance and like make it stop. Um, That's what I want to do. So, I was thinking about that last night. Like there are things that I miss when I was a missionary 
Um, yeah. But I'm like, I, you know, when you're out of the country, like I totally missed certain things. Yeah. I know. And when I got back from being, you know, studying abroad, whatever, for just six weeks, I came back to the States and apparently everybody had seen Forrest Gump. I'm mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. why are you guys all doing something without me that the whole country's <laughs> gotten into? Everything should stop when I am not a part of it. Yes. And I, meanwhile, I had to go see a movie that was two years old. <laughs> because that was all that was in English. Anyway, uh, so so I was like, okay, let's find out who Lil Nas X is. And I started with the Wikipedia, of course. So it's pretty, I think it's pretty interesting. He wanted to do something creative and he bought some kind of beat or whatever you mm-hmm. do when you want to sample something from some guy overseas for like $30 yeah. and he put a song together and then he made all these memes to support it. And apparently it took off and there were people fighting like in a bidding war for him to come and be on their record label. So Columbia records signed him and Then he put together this song, and it was called... Do you know it? Yeah. So have you ever heard it? Yeah. It was everywhere. I mean, yeah, with the face like that. It was everywhere. So what I... Okay, so that's... So here's the point that I am in again (laughs) of, of now with Spotify and all these other things, and I don't have to listen to popular music, I had never heard Old Town Road. Exactly. That's like sort of the thing when we were growing up, the good old days. <laughs> um, yeah, you only had the radio station, so everyone around you either knew country music or they knew Y100 music coming out of Miami, where we grew up. So we yep. all like had things in common. But now, yeah, you can listen to your own little yeah. things. Which um, is kind of a bummer. It is. It is. Or as I think I uh, admitted on the last episode, when I get in the car and if my <laughs> my iPhone hasn't been plugged in yet, I will listen to advertisements promoting Sirius Radio because I haven't subscribed in the last year. Um, so, so, so I was like, okay, well, I'll go look at this song that he did, thinking I surely would have heard it somewhere. I don't know where the hell I would have heard it, to be honest, Um, because if you don't know, I live in South Florida, and I'm surrounded by a different demographic (laughs) everywhere (laughs) here in life, Um, and they don't listen to Lil Nas X, but so I went to his uh, YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. He's got 12.9 million subscribers. Yeah. That's a lot, (laughs) in case you didn't know. Super lot. About numbers. That's a lot of people, and more people than that have probably heard the song who don't subscribe. Yeah. All right, so the song comes out, of there, and there's a video, and Chris Rock is in the video, and um, Lil Nas X is black, by the way, and so they've got uh, some other black performers in the video with him who are famous, and the only one I can remember is Chris Rock because... The other ones, I don't know. Who were they? Do you remember? No, but is that his first video? Like, um, because how did he get Chris Rock and them to be in it? Well, when when he became famous and did this song and were signed to Columbia Records, I suppose it was just something that came together like that. Yeah, because there were two releases. Yeah. Oh, were there? Yeah, because the first one, like, he was pretty much just being bounced around from uh, person to person, like his sister, because his mom was in jail, I think, or rehab. Oh, in his personal life. Yeah, his personal life. And he was like, you know, I am I think he was going to school, and he said, you know, I'm going to just play around with music. And... He bought that $30 thing, and he, like, combined country and trap music, which was really original, and did Old Town Road. 
He's from Georgia. He went to high school just outside of Georgia and went to, like, West Georgia College or something like that, it said, for a year until he stopped to work on his record career. But, but yeah, he had been making music for a while. So I think that, yeah, I think he did his first thing of Old Town Road, where he did the memes and he did all that. And then when it got re-released under Columbia, that must have been when he got all the star power. It's interesting because it does have some country twang to it. Mm-hmm. And then the the rap that he does, to me, sounds like this old Frank Sinatra song. <laughs> have you? Do you know which one I'm talking now, about? Now our age just... We, we, are, we did not... Frank Sinatra was not cool to us. We are not that old, but... No, but the kids in the hall did a good <laughs> sketch <laughs> using this song, Bim Bam Baby. And it was uh, it was this guy walking down the road, like hitting on ladies and having them <laughs> ignore him. <laughs> and it was like, take a flim flam flim, ba-da-ba-ba, And it's the same cadence as like, I park my horse or whatever. Gotcha. Nas X says. Yeah. Nas X, sorry. So... I But I always think that they talk about this. You know, the musicians that are making things now, um, a lot of them didn't invent ways to play the guitar, Eric Clapton. They went back to the people who started the blues. And so they didn't go to just Chuck Berry. They went to see who inspired Chuck Berry. So maybe he actually looked at a little Frank Sinatra. Who knows? I don't know. I kind of hope he did. So... So that was um, that was his first entree into superstardom. He got nominated. He was the most nominated male for the Grammys that year. Um, and to the Grammys, he wore this crazy pink outfit. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I can picture it. Yep, with the pink cowboy hat and, and, um, and kind of a Western wear look. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, as you do to the Grammys. He's a very but, sunny person. Like, you look mm-hmm. at him, he's very, like, smiley, sunny, feel good. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Some people, yep. you just, yeah. So, um, so even when I was thinking about it, I was like, who the hell combines country and rap? And I was just thinking like, oh, I can just see the country listeners, like their reaction to Old Town Road. Oh, no, you will not infiltrate country music, mister. And then I kept reading and it was correct. So I was just guessing. But that's what happened. Billboard's country charts decided uh, it wasn't country enough or, and it had some country aspects, but it wasn't necessarily country specific. So they took him off the charts for Billboard charts. Um, the I don't know the country Hot 100, and then he had some kind of a sponsorship tie-in with Wrangler jeans. And then people who, I guess, wore Wrangler jeans all the time threatened to boycott Wrangler jeans. Meanwhile, all of the Wrangler jeans that were affiliated with him sold out. Um, And then I think when, so his song went to number one and it stayed there for a long time and he came out as gay. Right. At the height of all that. Yeah. Which people were like, oh, that's a weird time to come out, but it's really the perfect time. Yeah. And he's, he's young. I think he was like 19 and now he's 22 or something like that. Yeah. He's a young guy. He's got that fame. And he's got that song that apparently other people know, but, you know, not me. So the video of uh, that's coming out next is Montero, parentheses, call me by your name. So Montero is his given name. Right. And Um, that's the thing. Like when this came out, everything exploded. The brains of conservative Christians melted yes so i think right before the song came out he released the sneakers isn't that the the (laughs) order of events yeah it just sounds the way you say it sneakers just (laughs) brings the cool right out of it yeah okay (laughs) fine right out of it so he released these satan shoes (laughs) and apparently what they do is they take nike shoes and they doll them up. So they, I don't know if they have like, uh, you know, 
what are they called? Like typeset, but they look, they don't look hand drawn. <laughs> it doesn't look like I've taken a, a marking pen to a set of Nikes, but, um, so they take these Nikes and they, they drew them up and had a Bible verse on them on the, like on the, where your, the ball of your foot would be. They have that. And then they've got the little clear bottom of the shoe and it's got red liquid in it. And it apparently has a real drop of blood in there. I think we talked about this a couple episodes ago. Well, didn't, didn't you say that there was a Christian version that had holy water in it? Yeah, yeah, bef- yeah. So this I mean, was like in response to that. Too. Yeah, yeah, the Jesus shoe, and so these are the Satan shoes. Um, so they did, they did cool things like they bought six hundred and sixty-six of them to oh, release. Oh, interesting, interesting. Yes, yes, and yes. they're all they're all marked like a piece of art, like one out of six, six, six. Um, and can you just see the person at Nike fulfillment, like? What the hell? Someone's buying 666 <laughs> pair of shoes. Shit's going to come down. <laughs> like, what's going on in a variety of sizes? People go crazy. I mean, they sold out, I think in six minutes, 66 seconds. They <laughs> sold out so quickly that by the time I heard about it, which was probably the day they came out anyway, it's like, and they're sold out. I'm like, all right. Well, <laughs> and you couldn't go buy a cop, a, a set, a pair. Okay, so then he comes out with the video, and it's called Montero, parentheses, call me by your name. So I'm going to read this to you. It's a recap of the video from the website Vox, and I'm going to read it in the church lady's voice. Okay. <laughs> because... <laughs> It all started with the March 26th release of his latest music video, Montero, Call Me By Your Name, in which he cavorts erotically with various <laughs> iterations of Satan, is stoned by a crowd throwing butt plugs, transforms a spear that's been homoerotically aimed at him into a stripper pole, and then slides all the way down the pole into hell before giving Satan a lap dance as an excuse to seduce him, murder him, and steal the crown of hell for himself in a win for bottoms everywhere <laughs> that was one sentence <laughs> i love that from the website yeah i i watched it i mean it's a very i mean if people haven't watched it by now someone dm'd us and said please do a live react to the video but i was just like i don't know how to really do that that's a lot of effort but i finally watched it for this yeah and it's it's fascinating, and I found a video where there is a pastor who interprets it, but and he keeps trying to say no judgment, and I think it's interesting. He's like, Nas X must have really studied his Bible because of the imagery that was in it. Yeah. And, yeah. I think and he did go to church. He did. And he did uh, get pissed off at what they made him feel like in church. I bet. So what I love is in one of the tweets that he put out, his response to angry Christians was that, I spent my entire teenage years hating myself because of the shit y'all preached would happen to me because I was gay. So I hope you are mad, stay mad, feel the same anger you teach us to have towards ourselves. Yes, exactly. And that's why people are just embracing it even more because of all yeah just hating well you know who didn't embrace it is greg Locke, pastor greg Locke. we got to do a Um, whole episode on that guy (laughs) i I, mentioned his i think i know why he didn't uh he says he mentioned his shoes in a sermon claiming he'll never listen to old town road again (laughs) i was like he listened to it in the first place like, but I guess if you've heard it and everyone else has heard it. Um, oh, and there are also T-shirts on Lil Nas X's website. Um, did you see those? Yeah. One of them says, I heart Jesus in all big letters. And then underneath in little smaller letters, it says, and that one part in the Montero music video by Lil Nas X, uh, when he gets nasty with the devil because it was a cool form of self-expression and art. <laughs> And I pronounced his name wrong again. Oh, it's a, he. You know what? He's more forgiving than than <laughs> Pastor Greg Locke. So this is. I heard Pastor Greg Locke. We got to do a whole episode on him. 
But I think that Pastor Greg was just mad that the sneakers didn't come with lifts. Because... (laughs) Is he short? He's short and angry and just... He's the worst. And he's like, I never did hear this little Nash X. Like, he mispronounces the name on purpose. And, you know, all I know is I'm not going to listen to him. He's a devil. And da, da, da. I mean, he's, oh, my God. I hate then it. I hate it. Maybe him. we should send him the T-shirt from Lil Nas X's website that says, I watched the Montero video by Lil Nas X, and all I got was this lousy T-shirt, and now I'm also gay and love Satan. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the whole, like, oh, he's satanic and all that. I mean, he is playing them. He's He knows what he's doing. He's much smarter than the preachers who are like, he's satanic, he's possessed, he's this and that. It's like, no, he's shoving yeah. this in your face on purpose. You're not getting it. But I saw someone, because there, there's a big difference between what he's doing and the actual, quote, religion of satanism. So, I'm going right. to read you The Tenets of Satanism. And oh, great. <laughs> let's see if you want to be one. One, you should strive to act with compassion and empathy towards all creatures. Okay. Uh-oh. Okay. We'll do that one. <laughs> I see where this is going. Yep. The second one, the struggle for justice is an ongoing and necessary pursuit. Oh, no. I know. I said to somebody in a meeting once, I crave justice. (laughs) They laughed. (laughs) How does that come out in a meeting? Like, I can see it being like I was at a rally for equal rights. Don't you worry. I I was quoted. (laughs) I crave justice. (laughs) Um, One's body is their own and subject to your will alone. Okay. Taking that. Oh, no. I know. (laughs) Why are you doing this? Tenant four. The freedoms of others should be respected, including the freedom to offend. To willfully and justly encroach upon the freedoms of another is to forego one's own. Sort of. I think there needs to be some... Some circumstances that are clarified there. Like, I don't think that it is somebody's right to offend me by talking to me if I don't want to listen. Oh, yes, yes. That's what it's trying to say. If everyone did that, then, yeah, they they wouldn't have that. Uh, Five, beliefs should conform to one's best scientific understanding of the world. Well, Uh, one should... (laughs) <laughs> take care, I'll finish it. One should take care never to distort scientific facts to fit one's beliefs. Yeah. <laughs> Number six, oh, no. people are fallible. If one makes a mistake, one should do one's best to rectify it and resolve any harm that it might have caused. Yeah. And the last one, every tenant is a guiding principle designed to inspire nobility in action and thought. The spirit of compassion, wisdom, and justice should always prevail over the written or spoken word. Well, so where does Satan come in? There is no worship of Satan and Satanism. That's the... What? I know. (laughs) So that's the whole, like, deal. It's, It's about benevolence and empathy, and, you know, it is... It was public. It was started to publicly confront the hate groups. It needs to be rebranded. It does, but I think <laughs> what they did is they came out to do it like as a statement against the Christianity that was being forced on people, and to certify it as a religion to be like. You know what? Yeah. We are going to get the same tax breaks as you. We're going to do all this so that we can be seen as equal and be able to fight against, you know, Christian prayer in schools and stuff like that and say, well, as a Satanist, that goes against my beliefs. Right. Okay. Well, that's fair. I know. So he's there's no Satan worshiping, and the preacher's... I I just think those tenants, if churches said that, well, there you go. Uh huh, uh huh. Well, okay, so here is what one 
person, and you might know who this is, and this was in an article, so I didn't do the research to look up who this is. But, um, or maybe I did and I can't remember because he's so boring. Um, somebody named Nick Adams tweeted out, Clowns like Lil Nas X and Cardi B couldn't last 30 seconds on a debate stage with the likes of real Candace O. And that's oh. Candace Owens? Yes. So Man, Lil Nas X replied, you can't last 30 seconds in bed with your wife. <laughs> I love, Not appropriate. I love, like, <laughs> so I follow him on TikTok, too. Oh, that's fun. Really? Um, and he's so great because he takes, like, people's comments and just riffs off of them. And he's very sharp, very smart. But also, lots of people have been making memes about if they were to go to heaven and they're, you know, up there and they're at the gates about to talk to God. And then it plays the Montero song for a second (laughs) as if they just watched him leave heaven and slide down the pole. That big pole. (laughs) Yep, they get distracted. Uh, A governor, Christy Noem, I don't know what she governs uh, or where I mean um, she says our kids are being told that this kind of product is not only okay it's exclusive but do you know what's more exclusive their God given eternal soul we are in a fight for the soul of our nation we need to fight hard and we need to fight smart we have to win and then he replied back to her you're a whole governor and you on here tweeting about some damn shoes. Do your job. <laughs> I love it. And I mean, that's it. That's it. Everything that I've Do looked job. up about him there, it's just a Christian response to Nas X video, a Christian response to the bloody shoes, you know. And I'm like, why are you spending so much fucking time on this like, fix your house. Clean your house. <laughs> um, your house. They're probably so excited to have something so concrete to preach against. Yeah, exactly. And, I mean, that's, that's, that's where we see the true church, that they're just jumping on this whole thing um, and condemning him, I guess. I mean, why would, why would oh, I want to call him John Locke? Greg Locke, pastor, mm-hmm. even bring up Nas X in a sermon. Like, why Why is that important to his congregation? Does he think that his congregation is listening? Or does he, because he says, and you can send that to Nas X, does he just want the video to go viral to get more people following him? I don't know. And then there's some part of me that thinks uh, there's something in the middle to do with, like, honestly, if I were the mother of a 12-year-old, I don't know that I want them seeing that. Oh, no. I don't know if I want them, you know, exposed to the WAP video. And uh, I don't know. But but I think part of it, what he's doing is that whole, uh, you know, family thing where he's letting maybe parents know or it maybe feels like his responsibility to let them know that this shit's out there and by shit i mean stuff so we're saying that pastor greg Locke <clears throat> and no, I'm, all of them I'm, I'm gonna uh stump you here because i okay. uh i am being sarcastic about him not you um who <laughs> brushed away his wife who he said was having mental illness, his wife of 22 years, and then remarried quite quickly. Within a few months, a woman that he was known to be cavorting with at his church, and none of his kids, like, uh, I think like one's in foster. I mean, it's a mess, and he, there are documents that he didn't pay child support. And Ugh. he's up there. Four foot two, ranting Stop. about Lil Nas X. Like, he's just, I despise Yeah, they him. have to have something to fight. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And they're like, oh, man, this guy's making more money than me. But you know what? <laughs> it's this black gay man is making more yeah. money than me. Yeah. 
the world is not black and white. It's just such a gray mess. It is. The end. See you next week. (laughs) (laughs) And that's our solution. Well, I guess it's time to talk about our merch, that we're coming out with shoes that have our saliva in the bottom. (laughs) So now you have material to clone us. <laughs> but it's like a it's like a swirly. You don't know who you're gonna get. <laughs> you might get some Karen, you might get some Bonnie. We don't know. You can DNA <laughs> test that shit. And what you'll come out with is a lot of whiteness. <laughs> I told you that on my DNA test I'm much whiter than I thought I would be. It's so disappointing, isn't it? It really really is. And I took it to my father. So my father's from Cuba, and but his parents are from Spain. And then, you know, it just gets really starts getting a lot whiter, like I said. Um, Yeah. I'm like pork, the other white meat. (laughs) But I did uh, find that I'm 1% indigenous Mexican. And so I threatened my girls that I was going to start indigenous TikTok because that's a group of (laughs) like real respected indigenous people who talk Mm -hmm. about their stuff. So I'm going to start one and just be like, I'm going to talk about my culture and how you can't (laughs) offend me. It won't be funny at all. (laughs) With my red hair. (laughs) Ah, It's going to be good. Well, I love Nas X and... um, I think I might love him because I want to spite others. I don't really care if uh, Nas X and Joel Austin do end up being friends. For some reason, I don't know if I'm liking these people better because conservative Christians hate them. I don't know if there's some psychological thing going on in me these days, but I, or I'm just looking at these people and going, you know what? They Christians have their own church. They they mm-hmm. have their own bubble. They're good there. These people are helping people who feel troubled or feel condemned or don't know how to deal with their sexuality or whatever it is. So I, I'm on their side. I don't like the shoes. Uh, and no, I, I don't, just don't care for them. You know, for me aesthetically, they aesthetically not, they're not my style. Now, if he comes out with a good pair of Jack Rogers for you, <laughs> with the little middle of the flower being blood, <laughs> would you go for that? Possibly, <laughs> but I don't wear a lot of red, so I don't think so. You heard it um, here, Lil Nas. <laughs> I don't think so. The other thing is, it does remind me of when we were in high school and they would latch on to, you know, Madonna would make a song like a virgin and she knew what she was going to stir up. Right, right. Like she knew. That but, to me is more, yeah, it, this and that are more artistic because they really bring in analogies and you know they do it in a smart way but what i think that they are enjoying a little too much is the fact that there's a black guy who is also gay who's made stuff about satan so they're like oh my god this is fantastic we can preach against satan but we also get to as a side dish hate a black guy and a gay guy Totally true. So that's what kind of, I think, might be going on. And Madonna being a woman. Yes, yes. Trying to figure out which just white men preachers jumped on in the past. I'm sure there are some, but nothing like these two. Let's go see what they said about Eminem. Maybe we'll have another episode. I know. I don't think. I don't know if they did. I was thinking him too. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, well, oh, surely Harry they Potter must have. What? And Harry Potter's white, so maybe. Uh, and maybe. he's fake. <laughs> <laughs> what about what about Axl Rose? Hmm? They wouldn't talk about Axl Rose in church. You think? They should. <laughs> he was a shithead and was always late for gigs. That's it. When they're talking late for gigs, that's the sermon. That's the sermon. Slash will tell you. 
All right, that's enough from your um, friendly white ladies for the week. I know. Thank you for following us. Spread uh, our seed far and wide to people you think would enjoy our content and follow us on all the things, and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.